Welcome back to the Photomator Masterclass. Today we were going to jump into the editor, but we just had a surprise release, and all of the new features they announced fit perfectly with where we're at in this tutorial series. So instead, we're going to spend a little bit more time in the photo browser, and I'm going to show you how you can use flags, stars, and these smart albums to take care of these big batches of photos that you always end up with as a result of a photo shoot, and use it to keep your photo library slim and manageable. Let's jump into it. Now the first thing that you may or may not notice is this new addition right over here into your collections. If you expand it, it gives you a hint as to what all of the new features are. So to get started, let's talk about these first two. If I click into Flagged, you can see it is sort of like a magic photo album that contains all of the photos that you've put a flag on. So if I come back to my photos, you can see that if I right click on a photo, I now have this ability to flag. The really great thing though is that I have these keyboard shortcuts, Z, X, and U, to really quickly go through and flag, reject, or unflag photos so I don't have to sit there and think about navigating menus as I'm trying to sort my photos. Okay, so to show you how these new features work, I'm going to show you a real world example. All of these photos were taken at the St. George Marathon this year and they're all taken by different photographers at different parts of the race course over 26 miles, all at different times of the day. So I'm going to go through and I'm going to sort and cull these into something that's more usable. Typically what I do is I'm first looking for things that just have obvious issues that I want to batch correct. So these I don't like the exposure of. Now I can right click and go down to flag and flag them. I can press Z or I can come up here to image and then set the flag right here. You can see once I do that the little flag appears. If I'm going through these and looking for others that have obvious issues that I will want to batch correct, I don't see any others that have the one same obvious issue, but what I am seeing are some that I know are just so poorly framed that I would never want to use them. So I'm going to click on this one here, and again, I could go to flag and hit reject here, or I can just use the keyboard shortcut X. So I'm going to quickly go through, you can see subjects cut off here, so those ones are for sure no. I don't know what the heck that angle is. This one's a definite no, definite no, definite no. So now I've got them flagged and rejected. The next step is usually going through and giving each of them a star rating. But because I'm going to be going through them all zoomed in, I want to include these here that I flagged as part of the star rating. And so I'm going to go ahead and make an adjustment to them. Normally I would go through and adjust exposure and the brightness. But for the sake of time, instead of messing with curves and everything, I'm just going to click ML really quick and hit done. And now I can press Command C to copy, or I can right click and do copy adjustments. And then I can edit these four photos and paste adjustments. Now, these are for sure not the final edit, but it's better than what I had. So now that I'm done, I'm going to press U to unflag them and go right back to my album where I was working. Now, because from here, I'm going to be going through and trying to give these a rating of how much I actually like the photos or I'm likely to use them. I'm just going to go ahead and double click in here. I can see, ooh, okay, yeah, you know what? That one is got completely out of focus, so that's an X. And you can see when I hit X to reject it, it's right here. Press right arrow to go to the next one. Ooh, out of focus also, that's an X. Also out of focus, my man, you gotta do better. This one's okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and press three. You can see when I've pressed three, I've now applied a star rating. Now, the star rating is out of five, and so for me, a three is eh, maybe if I'm really hurting for extra angles or things. But you can see there's a lot of cleanup that has to be done on this photo, right? Like if I'm gonna use this, I'm gonna to have to go through and actually just touch up all of these spots from the dirty lens. But anyway, so that's a three. The framing's worse, so I'm gonna say that one's a two. I like the framing on this one, so we're gonna go five, maybe two. This one's a great shot of my friend that I was running with and filming here, so I'm gonna give that one a five. This one's a good shot, but nothing's happening. Oh, and this is where he was dying, so I'm gonna keep that one. <laughs> I'll do something with those. You can see the aid helping him away. And if you see, if we come down here to this utilities, I'm starting to get these magic photo albums populated with my star rated photos. So for example, you know, this is all my five stars, maybe my one stars, you know, there's no chance I'm ever going to use them. So I could come in here and I can press command delete to delete it or just regular delete to remove it from this album. I'm going to go ahead and kill that photo. What else do we got? Yeah, you know what, as I'm looking at it, 
I don't think I like any of these two stars, so I'm gonna get rid of those. So looking through these, I don't know that I'm ready to get rid of these two and these three star ones yet, but you know, I could actually go through press command A and get rid of all of my rejected photos. Now, typically I would keep going with this process until I was completely finished categorizing all of my photos for the shoot. And then I jump into the edit. And jumping into the edit is going to be the next video. But before we move on to the next video, I wanted to show you a couple options in terms of filtering and sorting that you might not know otherwise. So the first thing is up here in view, you can actually choose what kind of metadata shows up on these tiles. And actually I can change it uh, to a compact star rating if I don't like all of the stars showing all the way across. The only downside to that is if I switch to the compact, I don't have the ability to just quickly click on these stars to add a star rating. The other cool thing that you can do is they've introduced this ability to filter based on these different options. I can do five star or whatever star rating I want, and you can actually do it for your entire photo album, not just these sub albums. So if, for example, you're not just shooting a single race day, maybe you're shooting over the course of several weeks and you've got them broken up into albums, you can then switch to this filter view to see them all in one big aggregated set. Now, the one thing I will say is that for some of you, you might be thinking, I just am an Apple Photos user. I'm gonna use the built-in favorites function so that they show up in my favorites album. It's top level, just like these other star rating ones, easy to find, and they sync over to Apple Photos, which is true. But the one thing I will say is often we have family photos and I like to hand over the photos to my wife and let her go through and put a star rating on each of them so that I know which ones she actually likes before I go through and consolidate the entire library just to the ones that we're going to keep. So something to keep in mind, even if you're not a pro, you'll probably be able to find some good use cases for these new star and filtering workflows. So that's how you organize and cull your photo library using stars and flags and filters. Next time we're going to be diving in and we're going to be hitting all of the editing features. There's a lot, so it's going to take a couple of videos. And if you want early access to those videos, make sure you're supporting me on Patreon or as a YouTube member. And as always, if you have any questions about anything we covered, make sure to leave those in the comments and I'll be sure to follow up with you. All right, we'll catch you on the next one.